we go. The last investigation day of Ace Attorney. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. Yeah, manipulating evidence, Lana, still not good. I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. Sound like sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. Typical Phoenix. He knows nothing, that guy. Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's latest victim was Prosecutor Neil Marsh. Neil Marshall. Jack Marshall's brother. He left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. Yeah, what did Emma have to do with them? She was a witness there? On the night. Oh! She was meant to be the victim. Shit. Shh. So, Officer Marsh. Oh my god. And because of that, Joe Dark couldn't set it up like his other murders. He left evidence behind because it was spontaneous. So that means you. Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming, neither did I. Okay, let's hear more about this. It happened two years ago. Yeah. I swear, everything from part one I've been saying, it was all linked to this case two years ago. It's the SL9 incident. It was right about this time of the year too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. Then suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage, but before he could, Mr. Marshall had tackled him. Then, what happened? He stabbed him. Joe Dark stabbed him. Yup. Lightning, lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I... I can still see it now. A permanent picture? What did you see in the instant the crime occurred? Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. When I came to... Lana was cradling me in her arms. Yeah, she's been through way, way too much. The little Emma. I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that in, about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. It must have been 14. That's just 
way too young to be going through that sort of trauma. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimony, testimonies, and find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You don't mean provided bogus evidence. She admitted it, Phoenix, we know this. The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence, and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, and I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumours about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true. Even though he may not have known it, Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did. Especially not to Emma. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in? Of course. This happened at the... Lana was a police officer. Lana used to be at the police. He tried to run around halfway. Th he tried to run away halfway through the interview, and fled into my sister's office. Yeah, because the detective's office and the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was a cheap. Oh, Phoenix. No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. And she got promoted after the case. Yeah. Lana used to be a detective. I better have another talk with her. Okay, let's go. Let's get this information from her. Lana! Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul, why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details? Especially about that unusual change of jobs? That is a bit strange. A detective wouldn't necessarily know all of the formalities and procedures with being a prosecutor. She wasn't necessarily qualified. I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. Well, 
a lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today, not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial, it really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. A little drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15, there was no murder at the police departments. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, Miss Starr, said. About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. Yeah, there we go. That's just more proof of my theory. They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was the deputy chief of police back then but he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant, he was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolises her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was to gain experience investigating crime scenes, so you could use that experience in court, right? Gant's help in the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became Chief of Police, and arranged my transfer to the Prosecutor's Office. Yeah. She and Gant must have forged it together. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives, including investigating Dark. Second in command? Yeah, Gant was the one leading it. Yes, Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office, and the same investigations. They even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Star. It was the first time Marshall had worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he killed Marshall's brother. And when he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was... me. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages, and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down, and then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the scene, Lana? It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. Jeez. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Because Emma fainted. Yeah, that's a feels bad man. 
Prosecutor Marshall, the victim Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I to be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her after all. Her sister must have gone after all her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident? That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? No, it's not. It's not a coincidence. What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago. Marshall and Angel Star didn't think it was. Yeah. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced by the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with the memories. That case just might not be over yet. Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. The Chief's office. Hmm. Let's go take a look. We get to go take a look at Gant's office now. I don't see Detective Gumshoe. Things seem kind of quiet around here today. You're right. The Chief of Detectives is the same, though. Why don't we just go look for some other people to talk to? Right. We can come back here later, and I should be able to... Okay, no, I have to go to the entrance. Oh, howdy, Bambino. Oh, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things turn out the way I... This way when I woke up this morning. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. You never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambino? I should have known my life could run out when old Billy dried up this morning. He's cactus. Yeah. Oh no. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. Yeah, yeehaw. He's a cake owner. But Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happens? Hmm. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Dark's alright. But, in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It was another knife. Wait. It means there was a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. However, 
in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been raised. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind? I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was the one of the best prosecutors around. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he, your brother? He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? Yeah, their first case together, and probably Marshall's first ever case, like Jake Marshall's. You mean the King of Prosecutors. I knew it. Why are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have been really close with his brother. The day of the SL9 incident took place. The day the SL9 incident took place. That wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transferal. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning. By nightfall, there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired, and I was demoted and boxed away in that tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Ganton Sky. Don't get upset, Bambino. I mean Demon Gant and Lana Sky. The investigation lead, Damon Gant, and his second in command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah. Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambino, but her secret is well, too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret. It all started two years ago. Yeah, with the SL9 incident. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure that I found out in court today. That boy, Edgeworth, isn't my enemy. He was the one who used the falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Marshall. Too bad I won't be around to work with you when you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. Damn. 
That's actually really sad. Also, how can we still not get to the... This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, th thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did, and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media and tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir? Oh, damn it, I just had to come back here. We'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? Don't ask him that! Don't, don't... Why, Emma? No! Oh my god. Smacking my head. Now I see Detective... <laughs> oh my god, Phoenix. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. We're just lucky that he's too dumb to actually... Whoa. Okay, that is fitting, considering his theme. And there it is! Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Yeah, an organ. Yeah, that is a massive organ. Check out the pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss Buck. I thought I was a I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. Oh I never could remember where C was. Uh oh. No. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gans. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. <laughs> so, right -o. have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've got my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statements. Provocative statements? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. See that big picture on the wall over there? That's a picture of Lana, Neil and me. So this was Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. Wait, that's the vase. Shit, that was SL9 evidence that we found. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. I'm going to take a look and see if there was anything else in that photo after Gantz finished. Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's all go out together. Oh, but this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> that case has been long since over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Phoenix, don't piss him off. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said, there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? 
Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? Like that paper he stuffed into his desk. They wouldn't be showing that if it wasn't something we'd get later. Shit. Okay, okay. Let's just see if we can maybe trick some gullible cop into letting us in. <laughs> Speaking of gullible cop to accidentally let us in, yes, we can trick Gumshoe. Maybe we'll tell him that the chief's up there offering $50 to anyone who... To anyone, and he'll go up there with us. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. Oh, he's been kicked out again, hasn't he? From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. Oh, he's the... Uh, yeah, he's still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Yeah, Edgeworth. Edgeworth's in a lot of trouble. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Ah, can't just trick him. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for all for the evidence they present in court, pal. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor kept him safe from those who didn't like him. But now, with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? Yeah, that sucks about workplaces. People spreading rumors to get other people fired. It's so stupid. In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know for, for making enemies. Hey Dick, keep up the good work. Y yes sir. Let's go out to lunch again sometime. My tree. <laughs> Gum she's loved though. Y yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Y yes, sir. It seems he, yeah, Gumshoe doesn't have problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. <laughs> anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Adult people, yes. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the fire earlier, while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. It was Emma. Me. Yeah, he didn't realize it. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. The knife. The knife that wasn't actually the true murder weapon. This is why it's an issue. Oh, I forgot. Look, it's all written here somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. We've got way too much evidence. Um, about this. Hey! Is that... It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. 
I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you going to do with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker and was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car's Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. Could Goodman have been killed by that knife? Th that's it. Now I remember what was in what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what, detective? Quick, before you forget again. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had all his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at that knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. God damn, poor Gumshoe. He probably spent like five minutes to realise it was broken. Yeah, well anyway, take a guess where the broken off tip was found. That's what did him in. It was in Marshall, wasn't it? It was in Neil Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. It broke off when he when Joe Dark supposedly stabbed him. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet. Down to the last fiber. Knives don't have fibers. That's pretty conclusive. Joe Dark was 42 at the time. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take the serial killer? One day on his road, on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? Yeah, more evidence, hooray. So it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by just then, so he killed him too. A jogger came upon the scene and he was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. Yeah, goddamn, like, what was it? He killed one witness, he killed another witness, he killed a child, then he killed a jogger. That's four people just to cover up running over someone. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness. A.K.A. Emma. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, <laughs> you should ask Chief Gant. He still wants that free $50. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. What? Yes, please, please, please. What, really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. So Gumshoe's going to get fired if he does it. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. 
So in other words, Gumshoe is the only chance. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Okay, no. So I'm going to take a guess here because in this game they like to give you little bits of hints in the wording. And Gumshoe is just like, I'm not going to get fired because of you. But do you know who he would get fired on behalf of? Edgeworth. I'm going to go see Edgeworth and see what, whether Edgeworth can give us some bad news or something we can pass to Gumshoe. Like, oh no, Edgeworth's going to be fired. Gumshoe, we need to do something. Wait, is it actually going to be that? No, no, Edgeworth. No Edgeworth fire. Please, no Edgeworth fire. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. It looks like he's writing something. It is going to be that. What? What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Let's get that piece of paper. Come on, Mr. Wright, let's take a look. Are you crazy? Oh, damn it, we can't. Just distract him, I'll check it out. Ah, uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground, what? Hold on, first let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. Damn, he does not care about Gumshoe. What? Letter of re resig resignation. If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says, letter of resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. But, Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. Yeah. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Ryan, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. So this is what we can use. This is what we can use to convince Gum Gumshoe. But... Edgeworth, don't. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can do can erase that. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility is the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I may have. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do, original. We're going to show it to Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep up this kind of... Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? First, last year's trial, and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But, Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk you out on the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. 
Nesta. What do you mean? The list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. So I reckon that must have been what Gant hit away because it had the same, like, it used the same image. I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture? Something seems strange about it. Oh, we can ask about the sword in the prosecutor's ward. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office that morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes. Just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. By Gant. This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came so you came back to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. That's suspicious. Like I think I've figured out the story, but Phoenix needs to. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall, he had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors Award. Speaking of that, there's something that's bothering me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. The sword is broken. Ah, I remember now. Remember what? That was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There was a, there's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award is based on. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Oh, uh, sure, everyone knows that. Why don't you just tell it, though, for Emma's sake? Very well. Phoenix doesn't know shit. Long ago, in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield that he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Objection! Oh, Phoenix. I did not know why the, the corner music is needed here. Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard the story before, right? Anyhow, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of both these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus, 
Chinese word for contradiction was born. <laughs> yeah, he objected, so the song played. Oh, I see. So the chipped shield and broken knife symbolise... Precisely so. They symbolise the merchant's items. Yes, the ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. The explanation makes more sense in Japanese. What? It'd be the same thing, wouldn't it? That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Because it was the actual murder weapon in the SL9 incident. Chief Gant. Because it would have had evidence on it, and every prosecutor would have had it from that point onwards. Okay. We've got enough evidence. What the? Ah, oh, not Angel Star. Can we just get to Gumshoe and break into the office? Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star, I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two, from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not, on, not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transfer. This can't be all attributed to mere coincidence. Yeah, that is a Monk and W moment, but it does not matter. It was part of the text I read it. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? You know, the little scene I happened to witness. The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savoured when eaten. Miss Star's hatred towards Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. Joe Dark, that's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though, must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Lana Sky. Yeah. My sister? The best of the best were put on the SL9 case. Of course, they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gans. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear while other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us save Goodman were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. 
Nothing's quite as simple as it seems. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used. By Gant. Gant was the culprit. So Lana was just hiding evidence for him. Not, it wasn't a team effort, it was Gant who killed Goodman. Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief? That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control, and then no one could stand in his way. The Prosecutor's. The Prosecutor's Office. He was in charge of the detectives, and then now, with Lana as his pawn as the head of Prosecutors, he had that under control. That must have been his goal all along. But but how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last, I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Gant led the investigation, with Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to attract evidence. Oops. Controller disconnect. He'd produce the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. So Gant was forging the whole time. Oh yes, there were rumours about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. I take it she's, yeah, forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked, and always wanted watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Now we can finally go convince Gumshoe to let us to break into the police department. No, not back to Edgeworth. Thank goodness no one else is showing up. Gumshoe, let's do this. Oh, you're back! You're, you're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Growing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. She took a note down. Lana took a note. Uh, Emma took a note down. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer is still no. I'm not letting you into the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. 
That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's got to be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. We know what to do. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? No, no way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? Uh, I can't believe they've pushed him this far! Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to produce him with- to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... we betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that. If someone found out, they wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. Oh my god. No! Gumshoe's gonna be fired. I just realized. If Edgeworth's gone, they'll look to get rid of Gumshoe next. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake. Alright, Detective. Thank you. Let's do it. Here goes, Mr. Wright. It worked. We're in. We're in. If anyone finds us now... Detective Gum, she's a goner. <laughs> he came with us. Damn it, Gumshoe. You could have passed it off as, oh, you lost your card again. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. Eek! Gah! <laughs> Gumshoe got slapped. Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah, Detective Gumshoe. What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I, I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, then what was the point in giving us your ID card? <laughs> Crashed and rendered unusable. But hey, don't do that to my card. <laughs> oh gosh. I hardly ever get the chance to come in here, so I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now, pal. You really do want to get fired, don't you? <laughs> Not if we're lucky. I mean, come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, well, Okay, okay. Now, let's go straight to that safe. I'm no idiot. Safe? That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay. If you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered in this panel to open it. Oh, no. Yeah, I know what the number is. I have a hunch. Oh, I know. You want to try my birth date? It's... Yeah. This one is so obvious. I've already said it. Gant's number. It, his card number is the sevens. Yeah, I was right, jeez. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was it? Was that, pal? 
777777. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean? 777777777777? Fucking Capricorn. <laughs> that ID number? I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Yes, please. Is, is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's... uh... <gasps> oh my gosh! It's the last part of the vase. This somehow looks familiar. It's the vase, Phoenix. There's something else in here too. <gasps> no. Mr. Marshall's... Why? More evidence? Someone's handprint. This is a handprint, isn't it? Uh, hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think that chief made up the design? No, it looks like what the Marshall brothers wear. It looks like their shirts. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? Is this all that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it, and a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they've got something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great. Now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's got to be something we can show the detective. Also first, he put something in his desk. Wow, look at the size of Chip Gant's desk. Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. Yeah. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like... A list of evidence. A list of evidence. In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this stuff. Hey, look at the case name. Oh? SL9 incident? I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said I wonder what... No, about evidence lists. Normally they're twice as long. That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-sized list of evidence. A list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing? Oh, it's the other half of the list. It's not a copy. I knew it. Chief must be hiding something about that case. It would appear so. So that's all the forged evidence. Ah, oh, it's just the same thing. Okay, we're gonna go talk to Edgeworth, I think, afterwards. This is the real deal, isn't it? The armor in these weapons? Sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations. First the pipe organ, and now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it, I'm not paying one cent in my taxes. You're a minor, Emma, you don't pay taxes. Yeah. Shh, be careful of what you say. Who knows? The chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Yeah, Emma gets tax evasion. Cut it out. You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. And I know it has relation to the vase, but I want to 
Make sure I don't miss anything. The Chief's Org sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally we hear him playing it from the Criminal Affairs Department. That's on the second floor, and this is the 15th floor of an entirely different building. When a detective screws up, the Chief calls them to his office and makes them listen to the organ for hours. What's so bad about that? Music soothes the soul. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days, except for the ringing in their ears. It's an instrument of punishment. Ha! <laughs> huh. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He wears earplugs, I imagine. He never listens to anyone anyway. That's beside the point. Okay. And then Lana's old desk. This was Lana's desk. Sure is tidy. Lana's desk is... Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gant must still keep it in clean in memory of their partnership. They were the stuff legends were made of. Does he keep it in memory of her? Or in memory of the crime? This was taken on that day two years ago. The day Joe Dark ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Emma. Windows 10. After receiving his award, Mr. Marshall took a picture here. They went, then went along with Chief Gant to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. Gee, you think? These shelves are empty. She must have cleaned them out when she transferred. A small picture frame. Hey, this is when Lana and I went to that theme park. Denton. Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Ah, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right, one of the shards had an SO9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? You mean, this one? That was in the safe? Yes, that one. That was in the safe. Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Let's assemble them. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. There we go. There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means... Chief Gant. Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey guys, get a load of this! What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. Uh, 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 can we, can we not do what I think we're about to do? A reddish line. That's blood. I, I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this and he's safe? So I think what we have to do now is talk to Gumshoe. That desk on the other side of the room. Yeah, no, I know the evidence list was in the desk, but Edgeworth still didn't say anything. 
That desk on the other side of the room, was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. On that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. Gumshoe's keeping it because we haven't proven it. Because we haven't proven its relevance. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. I see. Oh, you've never played. Okay, my bad. <laughs> so, ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk? No one except Chief Gant and the cleaning lady who's in here each morning. Still two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. Nah. <laughs> yeah, it's true, you've been a fivehead. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think. Nah, you wouldn't be. No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now then, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. Not so fast, buddy. Huh? What is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to stop bothering you, pal. You don't just let, let it go at that. S sorry. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think. Chief Gant might be a suspect, do you? In this murder, yes. What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings yet. There you go. Ignoring me again. As my usual trick... I spray everything. It's the only reason I found all that blood last time. Yeah, there it is. There's the blood from the SL9 case. Whoa, this area must have been covered in blood. It would have to be. When Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. Two years have passed, so the reaction's kind of dull. So a murder really did take place here. No way is it this. That's what the Chief was reading before, isn't it? You know, when we first came in here? Yeah, it looks like the right side of the form has been torn off. So Mr Edgeworth's list really was only half of the whole thing. Something else is bugging me more than that. Take a look at the back of that form, pal. The back? You got to be kidding me. Oh my god. It's Lana's image. Ugh, I'm mad. I hate this feature of examining the evidence. I wonder what this is. It looks like someone drew some kind of a sketch here. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Oh, no, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Mr. Wright? I'd better not forget about that picture. Damn it, was that really all I was missing? Oh, hey, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. Alright, go to town. Sheesh. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Oh? Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. Oh, there we go. Oh, my. F so that's how I can examine the cloth. That's stupid. That is so stupid.
why wasn't the cloth just put into my pocket or something and I could examine it there? I'm mad. Oh, haha. <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, I know how to do the fingerprints. I'm gonna choose the root, the middle finger, because I want to give the middle finger to this case. There we go. Okay. That'd be Joe Dark. Oh. Oh, we don't have his data. It's Emma's? Okay, this is a match. This is a perfect match. Why are they... Why are Emma's fingerprints? She pushed Mr. Marshall. Well, she touched him afterwards. No, it had to have been a push or a bump or something because that's way too strong an impression. What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match. Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Psst, hey, you, over here. What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing inside the cheap safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Hallelujah, we got it. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we're able to get some hard evidence. <gasps> ah! It's Gant! In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Eek! Ch Chief Gant! We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Unfortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to that meeting... Yeah, hide the evidence. As I was walking to my meeting, it, I happened to look out a window and see a stray dog. <laughs> for some reason, I don't remember anything else from this case except for this particular moment. Like, just seeing this line makes me remember what he's about to say. <laughs> I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a bowl. Just then I thought of a certain detective. Do you mean m me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Y yes sir, sorry. Oh. You in the coats. Me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, but sir... Now get out. Y y yes sir. We'll be, we'll be on our way too then. Wait, you with the spiky hair. Don't go yet. M me sir? I'd like a word with you. But sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator. You with the spiky hair, you're all free to go. M Mr. Wright. Shit. Shit. He's gonna tell Emma something. He's... I don't even know what's actually going to happen now. Look, pal, I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept eerily silent about it the whole time? Lana, I'm gonna try and smooth things over with the chief again. 
Later, pal. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Hmm. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing anything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all that I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really, I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I've finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you've convinced once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick headed is the term he used, I believe. Finally! I have to admit, I was more than a bit more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not you that it's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say. So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, whom may I ask is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of. I love it how it goes straight to it. It doesn't even waste our time. Well, Miss Sky. Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are, seri these are serious offences. Why is it though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was... Me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. The vase, I'm pretty sure. I just found this in a safe in the Chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gan himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. It's as you surmised. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman. 
Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Oops. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Although, I can't tell you the details. I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to just... I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside of the... <gasps> what? Shit. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. No, the Joe Dark knife. No, when I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. Yeah, I couldn't just leave that knife in him, so I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. Edgeworth's one. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. And that's what Angel Star saw. Her stabbing the dead body. That's why I ended up cutting my hands. And that is the reason for your bandage on your right hand. Yes, it seems I got a blood on the victim's shoe as well. And then... She saw me, just as I plunged the knife in. Miss Star. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? So it couldn't be connected to SL9 and Emma. It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that, by whatever means possible. So, you hit Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right, then I called my sister. To tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. She was going to get Emma to conspire as well. You asked Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma's so confident. About Lana's innocence. So Emma knew all along. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least, I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubt he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room. So that's why they occurred at the same time. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defence attorney and an investigator. 
Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Because of Lana, ah, uh, because of Emma. Tomorrow's trial, there's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's a real murderer. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago. And there we go. That's the final investigation day done. Alright. So, YouTube people. I'm going to end this part off here. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you do want to see these recorded live, I record them live on Twitch at KathRam. And if you want updates on streams and YouTube videos, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Kate underscore Ram. Bye.